Being a celebrity means fame and fortune, but with all the people that represent a heavenly virtue, there of course is always a select few that turn sides towards the deadly sins. There are seven deadly sins including greed, sloth, pride, lust, envy, gluttony and wrath, and these are the seven celebrities that perfectly match these sins. Sloth refers to laziness and the avoidance of work, stemming off the desire to avoid responsibility and doing the absolute bare minimum to maintain credit. Vin Diesel fits right into place with Sloth even though he has a net worth of over 200 million dollars. With the shady side of Vin Diesel covering his hidden side. During his 2009 promotion for the first Fast and Furious movie, he was allegedly so lazy that his own team had dumped him over his poor work ethic. No one could get a hold of him. He didn't pick up his phone and it wasn't until a Universal executive called that he finally picked up and used the lame excuse, I'm sick. Diesel finally arrived nearly four hours late, adding he didn't look sick, but he did do a couple hours of press. However, it was later confirmed that the firm dropped him as a client after the incident. It's no surprise that Vin Diesel and Paul Walker look like best mates on camera, but after the tragic death of Paul in 2013, it was revealed how he really felt about Vin Diesel. Vin was always trying to outdo me on the set, stealing the limelight, upstaging me and dawning all over producers to make himself look good and me bad. Vin has broken down in tears several times and said he wishes Paul would just walk in the door, tell him this was all a bad dream and forgive him. Apparently he's determined to make amends and he is doing everything he can to help Paul's family and to honour his legacy, but Vin's hypocrisy is making Paul's true friends gag because they truly know how nasty he was to Paul when he was alive. Alongside starting beef with The Rock, being accused of cheating and being called a nightmare to work with on set, cashing in on Paul Walker's memory doesn't seem out of the blue for Vin anymore. Wrath is the uncontrollable feelings of anger, rage or hatred, and it is often conjoined with the drive to harm others for nothing but personal gain. And is it even a surprise to anyone when you realise Alan is the celebrity that takes this title? Alan has become so worldwide hated that I've already released an entire video on how she single-handedly became the most hated human ever, and there is entire subreddits dedicated to hating Alan DeGeneres. She is extremely annoying, extremely fake in personality, very ugly, and extremely advantageous of the liberal media right now. One of the most hated Alan moments was on an episode where she reviewed fans really bad gifts. Okay, this is, uh, please enjoy with me. It says uh, Facebook and it says F, family and friends, A, attitude, C, communicate, E, exciting, B, behave, O, oops, O, opportunity, K, keep in touch. But it inspired uh, me to make one of my own. Okay, here it is, Ellen. E is for excellent, L is for lesbian, L is for lesbian, E is for entertainment, Or when she received this painting. Jamie. And here it is. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, that's what I said when I saw it. Oh. With comments reading, she knew she messed up when the audience said aww instead of laughs during a roast joke. And I'm sad to say that I lost a great deal of respect for Alan today. Making fun of a piece of art that someone not only spent hours on, but obviously felt was good enough to send to you, it's despicable in my opinion. That's not her first time doing it. She trashed gifts several times before, alongside being mean to half the celebrities that appear on the show, including Mariah Carey, Taylor Swift and Kylie Jenner. So Alan ranking in as the most hated celebrity of 2023 is nothing unexpected for her. But what sin is worse than wrath? Well, pride might just be the perfect candidate. Donald Trump well and truly represents pride as it is an excessive love for oneself, belief in one's abilities and the desire to excel everyone else. Pride is so horrible that it is considered the root cause of the other six deadly sins as Donald Trump is literally always seen flexing either his wealth or intelligence, whether it's real or imagined. Nobody can do it like me. Nobody. Nobody can do it like me.
honestly. Nobody's stronger than me. Nobody has better toys than I do. There's nobody bigger or better at the military than I am. Nobody loves the Bible more than I do. Nobody builds walls better than me. Nobody's better to people with disabilities than me. Nobody's fighting for the veterans like I'm fighting for the veterans. During the four years he was president of the United States, his pride was out more than ever, as he would never admit his mistakes or take ownership for anything he did wrong. There is even a list of the 59 worst things Trump did during his presidency, including attempting to give himself the Congressional Medal of Honor, flushing documents down the toilet, made an offer to buy Greenland, and he even tried to take credit for the COVID vaccine. Greed is an intense desire and passionate love for material wealth as it results from an irrational longing for what you don't even need. And this is where Nicolas Cage makes his name well known. You see, Nicolas Cage isn't shy of spending huge sums of money in a heartbeat, like when he purchased not just one, but two different castles, the first Superman comic, a spooky mansion, a reptile house worth of pets, nearly 20 cars, a private island, a Gulf Stream jet, he has his own shark, the skull of a T-Rex, a pyramid tombstone, an octopus, 15 different houses, four separate yachts, and a Lambo formerly owned by the Shah of Iran. Nicholas's money, however, disappeared the quickest due to three different factors, shady management, risky real estate, and the fact the dinosaur head was stolen in the first place. Stolen Tyrannosaurus Rex skulls that have apparently been smuggled out of the country. They've tracked down these skulls, one of which they believe belongs to Nicolas Cage now. As a claim from the IRS calling for more than $6 million in unpaid taxes, as well as when Cage sued his ex-manager for $20 million. But I guess the nicest thing he ended up doing was returning the dinosaur head that was originally stolen without his knowledge, only setting him back $276,000. Demi Lovato greatly represents the sin of envy, as the description states, Envy is the desire for possessions, happiness, as well as the talents and abilities of others. Most envious people will go out of their way to get what other people have, and according to them, the other person doesn't deserve their wealth, talent or status that they possess. This stock image I found sums it up perfectly. So what exactly makes Demi Lovato the leader of Envy here? Well, Demi was on the cover of the new issue of Glamour, and in an interview with the magazine, she criticizes Taylor Swift for having a squad and being mean to Katy Perry. To be honest, and this will probably get me in trouble, I don't see anybody in any sort of squad that has a normal body, Lovato said. It's kind of this false image of what people should look like, and what they should be like, and it's not real, Demi continued. It's not realistic, and I think that having a song and a video about tearing Katy Perry down, that's not women's empowerment. We all do things that aren't, but I have to ask myself, am I content with calling myself a feminist? Yes, because I speak out, and according to a post on r slash FOMOY, one commenter stated, Demi Lovato has clearly always been jealous of Taylor Swift. She's been dissing her for everything possible since 2008, Alameo. Taylor hasn't spoken about Demi ever except once to praise her. Demi also said that when she went to rehab, Taylor was the first one to call her and send flowers or something like that. And it's clear Taylor Swift isn't the only one she's jealous of, as another comment reads, Demi Lovato has always been jealous of Selena Gomez. It's obvious they think they should be more successful than Selena because they have a better voice. But the truth is, people always gravitate more towards Selena because she's genuinely a lovely person and makes better music in my opinion. It's not always about the voice. The same can't be said for Demi. While the sixth deadly sin is the sin of gluttony, which is the overconsumption of food or anything to the point of waste, it may shock some of you to find out that Elvis Presley claims this title for himself, with one of the first sites that came up with a Google search being Elvis Presley health issues, what caused Rocker to become so heavy before death? Elvis Presley seemingly lost his King of Rock and Roll title during his final days and lived as Fat Elvis instead on the day that he died in 1977. The singer reportedly weighed 350 pounds or 158 kilos, around 187 pounds more than what he weighed a decade before his death. 
Elvis's diet most days consisted of peanut butter and banana sandwiches, fool's gold loaf, party meatballs, fried breakfast, hot dogs, sodas, burnt bacon sandwiches, barbecue bologna, cheeseburgers, coconut cake, Harvard Texas caviar, Spanish omelets, fried pickles, sugar glazed salmon, meatloaf, fried chicken, sweet potato pie, hot chocolate, M&Ms, mac and cheese, jelly donuts, and bacon and mustard. He also once took the dangerous diet known as the sleeping beauty diet too far by actually putting himself in a coma in a bid to lose weight. As well as during the 70s, a Las Vegas doctor recommended Elvis go into a coma for a second time solemnly to stop himself from eating anymore. But the seventh and final deadly sin is the sin of lust. Lust refers to an immense desire to engage in a legal or immoral sexual pleasure. This can lead to sexual immorality between two unmarried individuals or between two people who aren't legally married. Hugh Hefner sadly takes this title in the worst way possible, claiming to have slept with over 1,000 different women and marrying someone one third of his age at the time. The Hugh Hefner story is downright atrocious. Hugh was the founder and editor of a magazine titled Playboy. He wanted Playboy to embody a sexual revolution, but some of the women who knew him personally say he institutionalized their objectification Many of the women interviewed were involved with Playboy more than half a century ago, and their sexual, physical, and emotional abuse continues to impact their lives, their health, their relationships, and their sense of self. Holly Madison, Hefner's former girlfriend, called Playboy cult-like, and said her first experience having sex with Hefner was traumatic. Another former girlfriend accused Hefner of grooming her at 19, manipulating her into participating in filming partners without their consent whilst quote, admittingly feeling trapped. And former employees said they knew women at Hefner's mansion and at his Playboy clubs who were abused by guests and members of his entourage and their assaults covered up by a clean up crew. Some former partners said Hefner them into compliance. It was like and it had such a high cost. One said, they lost so much of themselves, thinking that there would be a great benefit, whereas Crystal Hefner's new book, Only Say Good Things, Surviving Playboy and Finding Myself, covers how he was controlling, manipulative, and constantly taking over her life, which was released after his death back in September of 2017.